Hey peers, welcome to season two of the Modern Myths podcast. I'm Vince Ventura, Artistic Director of 12 Peers Theatre, and your host for the Modern Myths podcast. This season, we have some really exciting new plays by some really exciting playwrights to share with you, and we're going to start with It's Just Something That Happened by Alex Kunt. This is a coming-of-age story about friends, friendship, shitty summer jobs, and it explores the question, is there anything a true friend can do that would be unforgivable? So, sit back, relax, and enjoy It's Just Something That Happened by Alex Kump. It's Just Something That Happened by Alex Kump. Act 1, Scene 1. The sun has just finished rising on the Family Fun Time Bowling Center. We see the light stream through the front windows and watch the dust motes dance. The room has old arcade games lining the walls, one or two out of order. In one corner, there is the brunt counter, which doubles as a meager prize counter, and in the other corner is a small snack bar. Past the front door, we see the beginnings of a parking lot, a curb, maybe a parking space or two. At rise, all is still for a moment. We see the lights from arcade machines flickering lazily, their sounds muted or distant. Soon, Billy walks up from the parking lot. He takes a full key ring out of his pocket unlocks the front door, turns on the lights. He punches in, maybe using an old-time punched clock on the wall, and heads over to the snack bar. He brews coffee, starts getting ready for the day. This routine is second nature to him. When the coffee is ready, he pours himself some into a styrofoam cup. He drinks it, black, and continues opening. A moment later, the door opens. Billy doesn't look up. Frankie enters, holding a Dunkin' Donuts cup in one hand and her phone in the other. She's tall, thin, waifish hair, and the short pixie cut. You're late. By, like, 15 minutes. I could write you up for being 15 minutes late. But I'm always 15 minutes late. I know, I'm just saying. I could. He takes a drink of his coffee. Why do you drink that stuff? It's gross. That huge industrial-sized can of coffee has been in back for who knows how long. It's been here for, like... Two or three years, and it doesn't go bad for another year and a half. Oh. Well, next time we open together, just, like, text me in the morning. I can grab something from Duncan for you on my way. Oh, that's fine. I mean, I'm literally going there anyway. Thanks, but it's fine. It's no big deal. You get used to this stuff. Go clock in so I don't get in trouble. I don't understand who you get in trouble from. You always talk about that, but I haven't met, like, any sort of manager or owner or something. As they talk... Billy crosses to the front counter, exits into a back room, and reemerges with the cash register till. Frankie hangs her stuff up on the coat rack, takes the camera out of her bag, and puts it on the counter. She begins to count the till. Her name is Maddie Thompson, and she owns, like, a bunch of random businesses in the area. As long as I don't fuck up, I generally don't hear too much from her. But sometimes she'll just randomly stop in, like, once a year. I think she owns a bridal boutique in Windsor. You probably like her. Why do you say that? She just... I don't know. You're just the kind of girl who'd probably really want to own a bridal boutique. I mean, it's one of my secondary life plans. It goes, like, be a conceptual visual artist, own a bridal boutique, marry a really nice boy who wears flannel and likes mumblecore films, and become a feminist activist blogger. Good luck with those. They work in silence for a bit. Shit, it was your... 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 your thing. What? Your date thing. That was yesterday, yeah? Oh... Uh, yeah. How was it? It was fine. Didn't, like, it was fine. Just fine? Just fine. Is there going to be another one? Another what? Another date with her, with the girl. Oh, probably not. Why? I don't know. We got into this argument, and it was stupid, but whatever. What did you fight about? We were talking about... Woody Allen movies, and she said she loved Annie Hall. And I mean, I understand that it's influential, but it's just not that good. There are better... He's done better things. Uh Uh-huh. It's just... He's done better. So no second date? No second date. I'm sorry. That happens. But it shouldn't happen to you. A lot of things shouldn't happen to a lot of people, but here we are. I'm going to find someone for you. 
Someone who has your weird taste in movies and probably has a dog named after some weird French director. I can find someone on my own. It's not like I'm really even looking. I'm just, you know, it it happened with her, with Polly. It just, it just happened, and then suddenly I was asking her out to dinner. It's just a thing that happened. Okay, cool. Whatever, I'll let it go. You're like, what, seven? I'm sorry? Just like, who do you even know that is going to want to go on a date with a stranger and just, like, trust you? It was a hypothetical. Oh, sorry. Don't sweat it. Sorry. It's cool. What's scheduled today? It's, you're here until six, I'm here until eight, and Eli comes in at three. You gonna hang out after you get off? You know it. I'm actually fairly certain you're not supposed to do that. I think you're right, but hey, the nacho cheese isn't going to eat itself. Yeah, but like, customers are supposed to eat it. What customers, Billy? The people who come in and buy stuff and play games. We throw away like half of that of the nacho cheese every night. It's not like it's a hot commodity. I know. It's just been getting a lot less sales, you know. Yeah, I know. I work here. Exactly. I just... Maddie's been paying more attention and stuff, and where she's going to fire me or something. Dude, you're good at your job. Just chill. Thanks. Sorry. Thanks. Billy goes into the back room. The front door opens. Christopher walks in, looks around awkwardly. He's tall, handsome but gawky, and has a natural charisma. Hey, uh, sorry, but we're not open yet. We've got... We open like 15 minutes. Oh, I, uh, I'm the new guy. New guy? Yeah. I didn't, I mean, are you supposed to go to the lanes? I don't think so. Aren't the lanes in the game center the same, uh, place? I mean, yes and no. Like, we're in the same building, but we don't actually talk. Not like we avoid each other, but we're both our own thing, you know? No. Just... Separate but equal. It Didn't the Supreme Court decide that separate wasn't equal? They did, and they were right. The lanes kind of suck. I once had to talk to the manager dude there because of a heating thing, and he spent the entire time staring at my chest. I was like, can I help you? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but, like, I'm supposed to be here? The guy told me to be here. The guy? Yeah, who hired me. Bobby? Billy. What? Did you hire a new guy? Oh, shit, yeah, I- I totally forgot. Frankie, this is Christopher. Christopher, this is Frankie. She's been here for uh, a year and change. Nice to meet you, or at least know your name. Same. Frankie, you're going to be training Christopher today. I don't train people. Well, there haven't really been any new people here. It doesn't take a lot of people to run this place, so it's pretty much me, Frankie, and Eli during the summer. When they're in school, there are a few kids from the community college that work here, but they kind of leave after finals. They're shitty at their jobs anyway. Regardless, it's going to help to have you around here. Next person on the schedule will help everyone out. Cool. So, Frankie, I'm going to do some uh, admin in the back. Will you show him around and kind of teach him everything? I guess. Thanks. Let me know if you uh, need anything. Will do. Billy leaves into the back. Frankie hops up and sits on the counter. So what's your deal? What? What's your deal? Like, tell me about you, yourself. Oh, I mean, I'm just doing the schooling thing, and I need a summer job. So? Okay, cool. So, first question, how do you like cleaning bathrooms? Uh, I guess it's a thing. So the bathroom needs to be cleaned. There's a mop bucket and stuff in the closet in the bathroom, and the code to the lock on the closet door is 1812. Like the war? Whatever. Christopher leaves. A moment later, Billy comes in. Did you just send him to the bathrooms? Would you believe me if I said no? No. Ah, fine. Whatever. But when he gets back, he needs to learn how to do stuff like work the cash register, computer, and stuff. Okay? Fine. Hey, if he ends up just being a shitty straight dude, can I fire him? No. You're no fun. Lights. Scene two. That afternoon. Frankie is hanging out reading a magazine. Eli, a young, physically awkward guy, probably wearing a superhero shirt, enters. Hey, dude. Hey, how's it today? Dead. Shocker. He tosses his bag behind the counter. He jumps up and sits on the counter. Frankie flips through the magazine. I wish I could look this way, but without Photoshop. 
Well, there is always bulimia. I mean, bulimia is so much work. Or it was a joke. Oh, whatever. Hey, is Deathman in yet? No, why? I have this comic I was going to lend her. Oh, yeah, she was mentioning that last time she was in. The problem is that Death and I never seem to cross paths. You should probably keep it that way. Well, not from her death, but from the big death. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Dude Death is a cool guy. I don't know. He kind of traffics in murder most foul. He doesn't really murder people. Like, it's his job to let them die. I bet that girl death would be great at being real death. She kind of has that look in her eyes. What look? You know, the one where she looks like she wants you to die. Death doesn't do that. Death? She's this girl who comes in all the time. Huge gamer chick. She's actually one of the top-ranked Dungeon Quest players in the world. I don't know what that is. It's this game. It has a hundred levels, but nobody has ever beaten it. That seems like a myth. It's not. The company does annual tournaments in New Hampshire at this arcade place every year, and nobody has ever beaten it. Weird. Why do you call her Death? It's short for Meredith. Ah. Oh, right. This is Eli. Hey, Eli. I'm the new guy. Welcome aboard, Captain. (laughs) Well, I'm gonna go. I've got to pick my sister up from her summer camp thing. See ya. Bye. Cool shirt guy. He's gone. Wait, what's with this new guy? Oh my god, you totally want to fuck him. What? You do. What's up with him as Kofer? Is he gay? It is not. It is. I mean, like, I don't even know his name, so... Christopher. Christopher? Not like Chris? Yeah. Christopher. I know, right? He's pretty. Yeah. And totally straight. Are you sure? He was, like... He was very, like, he kept saying nice things about my shirt. Yeah, but he was talking to me about something earlier and said, quote, So me and my buddy, that's a straight boy thing. Maybe he's bi-curious? Just like everyone awful. Don't tell me you're not into him. I mean, like, he's pretty, but pretty in that way where it's like, I don't want to fuck you, I just want to behold you. What does that even mean? You know, like, beholding. It's a special form of objectification reserved for straight men. No, not... I know what beholding is. Just, like, what even are you? Don't hate me because you ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you learn about him? Why don't you ask him yourself? Why don't you ask him yourself? Just shut up. I don't know. He's in college, I think. He definitely looks like 22. He said he has two years left, so I guess he's 20-ish. You think he goes to RCC? I don't think so. You either go to community college if you're dumb or poor. And he seems confident, and I don't think he's got any money problems, so... Maybe he's just really good at thrifting? Maybe. Dude, you should find his address. Why? Because you can look up people's houses on Google, and it'll tell you how much they're worth. Like, did you know that Katrina Tunstall's parents' house is worth, like, $2 million? Didn't her grandfather invent birth control or something? I don't know. Hey, Frankie... We're going to RCC next year because we're poor, not because we're stupid, yeah? Of course. I mean, I only applied to my dream school, and you didn't even apply anywhere else, and... Well... What? I kind of applied to RISD. What? I mean, it's no big deal. I got waitlisted. What the fuck? How come you didn't tell me? It's literally nothing, and I didn't get in, so it's fine. Dude, you got waitlisted? That's awesome! Nobody gets in from the waitlist. Did you not tell me you applied because you thought I'd be mad? I mean, a little. We always talked about going to college together, so... But mostly it was just kind of a thing that happened. I guess my portfolio wasn't good enough. Whatever. Dude, your photographs are awesome. They're idiots for not taking you. Whatever. I'm already over it. It's not like I had a chance to begin with. Hey, let it go. You'll still be Diane Arbus 2.0. Just drop it, okay? All right. Sorry. Billy comes in from the back room. Hey, Eli. Hey. Is it cool with you guys if I duck out early? Yeah, no big. What's the occasion? It's, um... It's gonna sound like I'm trying to get, like, sympathy or something, but... Today would have been my dad's birthday. My mom has taken it kind of hard this year, so we're gonna watch his favorite movie together. What's the movie? Uh, Apocalypse Now. That doesn't seem very... It's a great movie. I know. It practically ruined everyone who was involved in it. Like, Francis Ford Coppola was on LSD for most of the shoot, and sometimes wouldn't be on set because he was just sitting in his trailer 
crying and stuff just like wouldn't come out. That's like my entire life. Fair enough. Have a good night, dudes. Call me if you need anything. Will do. Could you clean out the slushy machines tonight? I did it last week. It's Frankie's turn. I don't believe in slushies. I don't believe in white girls, and yet you're still here, so... I don't want to clean it. I don't want to either, but it's your turn. But it's your shift. Guys, shut up. Eli, clean it. Frankie will clean out the trash cans or something later. Fine. I'm leaving. Oh, uh, also tomorrow, before we open, I'm calling a crew meeting. A what? A crew meeting. A meeting. With all of us. Since when does this happen? Since tomorrow. It doesn't make sense. And it's my day off. I want to sleep in. Tough shit. I'll bring donuts, okay? And y'all, y'all get paid. I was opening anyway, so cool. Fine. Good. When uh, Christopher gets back, would you tell him? He's coming back? Yeah, you're teaching him how to close tonight. Frankie smacks Eli. What? Stop thinking whatever you're thinking. I'm, uh, leaving. Night. Night. Billy leaves. Why did you hit me? That hurt. He's not going to fuck you. That's not what I mean. No, I... stop. You always do this. You always fall for the first hot dude to smile at you. I do not. You do. And usually dudes with stupid fucking names. Like, remember when you were a freshman and you were just in love with that football player guy you had never met? Yes. What was his name? Dave. Dave. Like, literally, what kind of name is Dave. He had really nice eyes. But, like, a David, I could understand, because a David is going to be a good father one day. A David is the kind of guy where you'll be watching a movie one night, and your daughter will come downstairs because she couldn't sleep, and he'll take her back upstairs and just be a really good, hot father. Dave is just a waste of space. You're just a waste of space. Okay. Whatever. What I'm saying is that our universal naming theory would say that Dave is an awful person. And because we're always right, it would be right. I get it. I was 14. Can we let it go? Sorry. So I ran into Cheryl Thompson at the grocery store with my mom. Isn't she the one who is still talking about Coney, even though that was only a thing for like a month, a million years ago? Yeah. But my mom was talking to her mom, and then her brother walked up. She has a brother? Yeah, I didn't know either, right? Because they're like half-siblings, but he had the best, biggest nose. It was so aquiline. Like, seriously, that nose could fuck me so hard. Like, on a scale from Renee Zellweger to Adrian Brody? Definitely like an Owen Wilson, but when he was hot, or whenever he's in Wes Anderson movies. Not before he got all sad and tried to kill himself. You love guys who are sad. Yeah, but sad in that way where they just kind of hate their parents. Not sad in a kill themselves kind of way. Frankie's phone vibrates. Who is it? Ugh, it's just Andrew. Probably wants to know when I'm coming home for dinner. Yeah, but I mean, you haven't been home for dinner for a few days, right? So it makes sense that your dad wants to see you. No, you don't get it because your dad left when you were a kid. But all dads just wanted to do is be controlling influence on your life. And he's making meatloaf, so, like, could you get any more heteronormative? I don't know. Whatever. I've got to go. You going to be cool with Christopher coming back in tonight? Uh, yeah. If he could come back in without a shirt, that'd be better. But, yeah, NBD. Cool. If he does that, tell me, because what a literal slimy creature. He can slime all over me if he wants. Gross. I like it. Keep up the good work. Ciao. Ciao? Yeah, is it not working? No. Damn it. She leaves. Lights. Scene three. Early morning before opening. There's a box of a dozen Dunkin' Donuts on the counter. Eli pours himself a cup of coffee. Frankie takes a photo of him. Dude, it's too early for portraits. How could you drink that stuff? It's here, and I closed last night, so I'm tired. I mean, you also spent your night reading comic books and trying to message the hot guy down the block on Grinder. Hey, I'm just looking for the Batman to my Robin. Ew, they were totally not gay together. Yes, they were. No way! Billy... What? Were Batman and Robin gay? Probably. No, Batman is like his father, dude. Yeah, you should understand that. You've got all of your weird daddy issues. It's like that. I don't have weird daddy issues. Yesterday you spent like half an hour talking about your dad's sweaters. Shut up, Christopher. Point is... They were probably boning, yeah. And you know how George Clooney played Batman as gay in that one movie? Yeah, but isn't Robin like a literal child? Not really? Whatever. Guys, this conversation is going nowhere. Let's just drop it, okay? So, um, I guess I have to call this meeting to order. Uh, thanks for coming in, everyone. It's, um, 
there's this unfortunate thing that's happened, and I guess I don't know what what I mean is well don't don't think of it you know as a tragedy. It's just what I mean, that, dude. Right. Uh, so the Family Fun Times Bowling Center has been sold. That's it. We never see what's her name anyway. It's not. No. So, the people who bought it, uh, Bowling Incorporated, they're making it into one of their bowling centers. Oh, Bowling Inc. I've been to one of their places. My grandmothers live in California, and they have a bunch bunch out there. They're these huge multimedia bowling lanes with like a bar and disco bowling. Uh, and a yeah. Bar- Thanks, Christopher. So, they bought the place, and it's becoming theirs now. And. So when they revamp the place, we're all out of a job. What? What? Don't worry, guys. It, it's going to be the end of the summer when, when they start all this big stuff, the, the renovation. And they're firing us all? Unfortunately. They're not, they're not going to be an arcade or anything. Well, there is, but it's going to be one of those, those small ones with air hockey and no prizes. And there's not going to be a snack bar because they, they do, they have this, like, this restaurant. And they're not going to just train us on the bowling alley stuff? I guess it costs too much money to cross-train all the employees or something. That's bullshit. That makes no sense. I don't know, Christopher. Oh, shit. Billy, are they firing you too? Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. They can't do that. I mean, you've been here forever. Like, you started working here when you were in high school. They can't just fire you like some fucking... Thing. It's okay. No, that's so fucked up. And you're just out of a job? You've done so much for them. You told me this place was a shit show when you got here, and you fucking fixed it. And they're just kicking you out? And what about your mom? How can Enough. you... Enough! I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, Frankie? They gave us plenty of notice. I got the whole summer. And three of you have probably been gone at the end of the summer anyway, so it's not a big deal for you guys. Are you sure you're Okay. I will be. I'll figure it out. Until then, this is going to be the best fucking summer ever, huh? And to kick it off, we are going to have a party here tonight after we close. A party? Like a party party? Well, no. But just like us. And probably death. And some of the other regulars, though I, I doubt they'll come. I'll get pizza, and we can just hang out. Dude, can you get us beer? Billy, you gotta... Uh, no. Ugh. I could get arrested for that. Dude, it will be fine, and it's not like you have to worry about getting fired because they pretty much already fired you. It's just gonna be us. Please? Please? Jesus Christ. I... We'll see. Thank you. I said we'll see. But, um... Anyway... I'm sorry, guys, about the the whole thing. It's fine. We're just worried about you. Yeah. Let us know if we can do anything. Like I said, I'll figure it out. You guys are too young to worry about my shit. You'll have your own when you're my age. But that's a different story for a different time. All right, we got to open. Frankie, have a good day off. Christopher, we'll see you at three. Sweet. See you guys on the flip side. He leaves. Frankie hops up onto the counter. You're staying? I already have my coffee, so I'm not really sure what the problem is. We gotta open. Just, just don't distract us, okay? I'm going to the back, count the tills. Eli, let me know if you need anything, okay? I gotcha. Billy heads in back. Eli starts doing his opening work. Frankie takes a selfie on her camera. This whole thing fucking sucks. The buyout? Yeah. I mean... You've been here long enough. You know what it's like here. I'm surprised that this place is still around. And I'm more surprised that they're buying it out and that it didn't just go under. Yeah, I suppose. I guess I had this dream of, like, you and I working here through college and then starting our own business together. What business? I don't know. Probably, like, a coffee shop or something. Where we'd only hire cute baristas. Mm, Like the ones who make a heart in your latte. And when they give it to you, they look you in the eye in this way where they 
you think they mean it, that this one latte heart is real. And then we both get married to latte artists and move in across the street from one another, and we still run this coffee empire. It's an empire by this point. <laughs> and we run this coffee empire from home while trying to balance being housewives and feeling trapped in our relationships. Then eventually we run away and elope with ourselves because nobody is good enough but each other. And we live in the Alps and sometimes have trysts with the burly mountaineers who live there. But in the end, everything is just fleeting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm worried that we're going to drift apart when we go to college. We won't. But it happens all the time. To everyone. Like, remember Katrina Drinkle? She and I were best friends in middle school, and now we're not even Facebook friends. That can't happen to us. You need me. I need to just... Oh, Jesus Christ. There's too much fucking space. Everything is just... There's so fucking much. Whoa, whoa, calm down. Dude, it's fine. Let's... Let's just take it day by day, okay? All right. I guess. But how weird is it that we're having a party tonight? Maybe Billy just doesn't care anymore. Well, like, he cares. But if he's out of a job, why not just throw a party? It's so shitty that they're not keeping him. He works so hard. And, like, under anyone else, this place would be a rat trap rather than just... old. Do you think Christopher is going to be at the party? Well, seeing as how he's one of the four people who works here, probably. But that doesn't mean anything for you. Don't do this to yourself. What? You know what. You're going to come to this party and hope to, like, hook up with him, and then you're not gonna, and then you're going to spend the whole night beating yourself up over it, which will be precisely zero fun. It's not even like a real party. It's just us. Stop being such a penis. I just want you to not get hurt, okay? I'm an adult. Yeah, but only legally? Whatever. I am not in love with him. And yes, I like to think about him naked, but it's no big deal. He's just some guy. And I don't need a dude to make me happy. I have you. Please don't ask me to buy a strap-on. What I'm saying is that our friendship is the most important thing to me. I knew we'd be friends forever since the day we met. I don't know when that was. What? You remember? Yes, I remember. That's weird. Um, actually, it's really weird that you don't. When was it? It was the first day of sixth grade? Back in Ms. Tyson's English class? She did this activity where we had to go to different corners of the room for these different categories that we were in so we could meet each other. She'd be like, if you like the color red, go to this corner. If you like the color blue, go to that corner. And she asked us what our favorite season was, and we were the only two people who liked fall. And when she asked us why we both said it was because that was when everything was dying. I don't remember that. Sounds like something I would say, though. That was back when you had gotten braces over the summer and didn't want to talk to anyone because you didn't want to show them your teeth. Right! I remember that you let me talk to you with my hand in front of my mouth. Exactly. Oh, God. That was also the year that I got my mom to buy me those tarot card temporary tattoos, and I wore them every day, and I matched them with my mood. I think you ran out of swords really fast. Yeah, but now I still really want a tattoo of the Three of Swords. You would. I want it, like, on my ankle, and then also to get a shadow portrait of my dad on my wrist. Dude, go to bed. I'm gonna. It's gonna be a lot of fun tonight, and I know how you like to nap. I do. When you come, will you bring me, like, a Red Bull or something? Sure. I'll see you later, okay? Okay. She leaves. Lights. Scene four. Evening. Close to closing time. Eli and Christopher hang out. Over in the corner, Death, an Asian girl in her 20s, plays an arcade game. So then they come, like, limping into the hospital, right? And people aren't sure if they should help them. And she, Melissa McCarthy, just keeps waving her gun at everyone. And Sandra Bullock was stabbed in the leg, so she can't really walk. And then Melissa McCarthy starts running around the hospital trying to find her brother because this dude is going to kill him. And she finds him, and there's this big shootout thing in his dude's hospital room. And Melissa McCarthy is like, pew, pew, pew. And this other dude's shooting up like, cow, cow. And then Sandra Bullock comes in, and she shoots him in the dick. Dude, that's classic comedy gold right there. Yeah, no, I definitely got to check that out. It sounds great. Dude, it totally is. It reminds me of, uh... Oh, have you seen it? Uh, I mean, have you seen Con Air? No, I haven't seen Con Air either. Dude, we got to watch it sometime. That's a fucking revelation. It's like the perfect movie. Yeah, we totally should. I definitely have it on Blu-ray. You should come over sometime and we can watch. Christopher's hand is on Eli's arm. That sounds... great. That sounds great. Awesome. Oh, 
Shit, also, I have this, uh, you're gonna love it. Hold on, I have it somewhere in my bag in the back. Uh, okay. Christopher leaves. Beth speaks up, not looking away from her game. Did he just spend the last 15 minutes explaining the plot of the heat to you? Yup. Who the hell is this guy? Christopher, he's the new dude. Are you two dating? No, why? I mean, you guys just flirt like nobody's business. Seriously. No, we're not... Are you kidding me? He he, no, I haven't seen Con Air either. I didn't say it like that. But do you think he's into me? What? <laughs> she begins tapping frantically on the gamepad. I mean, he's just been talking to me all night, and he was touching my arm, and you don't just touch someone's arm if you're not... Boss, dude, could we just... Oh, fuck you, you piggy motherfucker! I've killed you a fucking hundred times before you and your fucking undead pig army. Die, swine! An odd silence, only filled with the sounds of death playing. Yeah, but he just acts like it, you know? Like he's into me. Not to sound conceited, like, oh, he should be totally into me, but just, he seems like Fuck he's off. into me. Dude, you just got me eaten by the fucking zombie pig horde. Those are some basic-ass monsters, dude. Oh, sorry. You owe me a game. Sorry. He tosses her a few quarters. Thank you. And anyway, I'm pretty sure he's straight. Yeah, but this happens all the time, right? Like, guys date girls, and then they just meet someone they like, so it just happens. Sexuality is fluid, so it's not out of the question. For guys like him, it is. What do you mean, guys like him? It's just... I know people like him, okay? They're all talk, no game. You're too young to get it. But just trust me, okay? Death, you're like three or four years older than I am. I'm not that young. Whatever, dude. Hey, Death. Yeah? So I just found out that Frankie got waitlisted at Risty. That's awesome. Good for her. I know, but also, like, she didn't even tell me she applied. Oh. I mean, she probably didn't want you to freak out. But I am freaking out. We tell each other everything. Like, sometimes we just drive around endlessly at night, listening to Brand New and the Front Bottoms and stuff, and then we'll, like, go to this diner that we stumbled across once, and it's just so fucking pleasant, and we have these great heart-to-hearts. And never once did she say anything. Chill out, bro. It's not a huge deal. She didn't even get in, okay? But she did. She got waitlisted, which means that for the rest of the summer, any day, she could get just a... a an email or a fucking phone call or something, and then suddenly my life will be changed forever. Eli, bro, don't sweat it. It might not even happen. Like, I'm pretty sure that colleges don't even take their wait lists anymore. They just over-admit. Yeah? Yeah. Just take it day by day. I'm just really scared of losing her. She's the only reason I haven't... run away or whatever. Here it is! What is it? It's this big... Like, they got a bunch of comic book writers and artists to rewrite their favorite movies, but they put superheroes in. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, it's super cool. It's got a bunch of cool stuff like Titanic with Spider-Man and Thelma and Louise as Scarlet Witch and Jean Grey. I brought it because I remember you said you liked comics last night and you'd totally be into it. Thanks. Oh. Uh, also, who's that chick? Like, she's been here for hours. Oh, uh, that's death. She looks scary. She isn't. Well, she is little, but she's secretly really nice. You should go talk to her. I don't know. Do it. <laughs> will, will, will you ring me up for a slushy first? Yeah, sure. Hey, I'm Christopher. Hey. Death. Nice to meet you. I'm new here. I know. Yep. Are you going to be at the party tonight? The one that starts in half an hour? Yeah. Are you going to be there? Yeah. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Don't be a dick. She's joking, dude. Chill. Here, take your slushie. Thanks. Hey, you think it's too early to... He pulls out a flask and shakes it. I mean, maybe don't. Oh, come on. It's no big. In an hour, it won't matter anyway because we'll all be partying like it's 1999. Ah, uh, yes. A dial-up party. We should all swap our AIM screen names. Cute. Here, let's do a shot. I don't know. Come on, dude, please. A smile. He reaches out and holds the bottom of Eli's shirt for a second. Fine. I mean, this is dumb. Christopher starts pouring the shots, probably into a small Coke cup or something. 
I mean, what even is this? Tequila. Oh. You've had tequila before, right? Yeah, I mean, so much. All of the different... Just like one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, you know. <laughs> you're cute when you're trying to be cool. Here, take this. You ready? I guess. They do the shots. <sighs> <coughs> you don't do this very often, do you? Is it that obvious? Yes. Yep. Awesome. It's fine. We can't all have years of experience behind us. Hey, you'll get there. Frankie comes in. She's dressed up, but not well. There's a solid streak of Urban Outfitter shittiness in the outfit. Hi. Hey. Hey, you're, uh, dressed? Yeah, well, I went to Urban Outfitters this afternoon, and they had this mesh full body suit, and I wanted it so badly. But they didn't have it in my size because I'm fat, so I went with this. You're not fat. No, no big deal. My body's literally a garbage can, so it's fine, and I'm fat. Just let it go. Do you want a shot? Jesus Christ, yes. Hey, did you bring me my Red Bull? What? You said you'd get me a Red Bull. No, I didn't. You did this morning. Don't worry about it, bro. You can have it some of my monster. He hands Eli a half-finished can of monster. I... Do you want me to pour it into a cup? What? No, that's dumb. It's fine. I don't care if I get your cooties. Thanks. He takes a sip and is probably too excited about the whole situation. Hey, so what's the deal with Billy? What about him? Like, what's his deal? What's up with his mom and stuff? Oh, it's no big deal. Like, his dad died a few years ago, and his mom has this thing where she's in a wheelchair a lot, so he had to put her in a home. Shit, really? What? No. Frankie lives in a made-for-TV indie movie. His mom is in a wheelchair, yeah, but they had a shitty relationship when they lived together, so he moved out. She's not in a home. She's in her home. He just helps pay their mortgage or something. Their relationship is a lot better when they don't live together. That's it. She doesn't live in a home? No. Shit. Well, good for her. It still sucks that he's gonna lose his job, though. I heard they're opening up a Starbucks in New Barnage soon. Maybe he can get a job there? I don't know. He's just been doing this so long, and I don't know if he can deal with all that pressure. Like, here he can take his time and kind of do whatever, and he's good at that, but something faster? Anyway, so I was on Tinder, and I found my literal future husband, and he had a link to his Instagram, and so I followed him, and it's been like two hours, and he hasn't followed me back, so I am livid. Yeah, but we're still open. Nobody's going to come in, dude. I said the same thing. Christopher is right. Christopher is always right. Christopher needs to not talk in third person. Christopher will talk in third person when he pleases. Christopher needs to shut up. Christopher needs to pee. He leaves. He's so weird. Pretty. Get better taste in men. What even is your type? Men with vaginas. If you don't mean pre-op trans do, then you need to rethink your privilege. Fine. Women. Whatever. I didn't even know you were a lesbian. You never asked. I knew you were gay, though. How? Well, for one, you were constantly drooling over this Chris dude. Christopher? Like, who the hell even is this guy? He's this college dude who's here for the summer to make some money. Eli has always had a thing for older guys. Did you know his first time was with a 34-year-old? Frankie, what the fuck? What? Seriously? Whatever. It's no big deal. What you do is your business. And apparently the business of anyone who Frankie wants to tell. Jesus, it just came up in conversation. (sighs) It's fine. Whatever. Just... Don't, again. Okay? Fine. Sorry. Fine. Christopher comes back. He looks around. Where's my slushy? You put it over there. Do you think we could put booze in the slushy machine and it would still work? That's awful. What? That's perfect. Frankie doesn't like slushies. Why not? Slushies are God's gift to humanity. Back in 7th grade, she downed one of those 44-ounce or whatever slushies and then barfed it up. I haven't barfed since because it was awful. It was lime green and it stung coming up. There's a green spot in the corner of her room to this day. She even did a photo series of it once. It was weird. What, you mean you haven't thrown up in, like, five years? Nope. Not even if you're sick? Nope. That's fucking weird. Hey, is there gonna be pizza at this thing? I hope so. And hopefully not that shitty frozen stuff that we sell. Hey, that stuff isn't that bad. Billy has come through the door. He's holding a couple of pizzas in the black bag. Frankie snaps a photo. Well, I mean, this stuff is better. But still, that's some high-quality frozen pizza. Isn't it from Costco? High quality? Yes, sir. What did you bring us? Some pizza, cheese, pepperoni, and a white pizza with veggies for Frankie. You're the sweetest. And I maybe got some beer, which is only to be consumed by legal adults. But if I don't see you take it, I guess I am not liable. Um... Earlier, we did a shot. Okay. I just... 
I know we shouldn't have, but... Dude. I'm sorry, but it was just something that happened, and I don't want to get fired or in trouble. I just have a... Like, I just feel bad, because I know I wasn't supposed to. Oh, Christ. Just... Just don't do it again, okay? Everyone's absolved tonight. So, that being said, let's just lock the door and hang out. Fuck! Oh, Def didn't see you. Hey, Billy. Yeah, sorry. I... Level 27 just got me. I'm off my game. I don't get it. Is this game, like, even beatable? Yes. It's just extremely difficult. Over time, you get to know the little ticks of the game and find the places where the programming isn't as tight as it should be. It sounds like a lot of work. It is. But it's about playing the long game. It's like... So in level 17, you pass this giant statue of a horse, right? And you think it's just a background thing that looks pretty. But then when you get to level 22, you find out that you need this gem. And you have to go back until you find it, and it's right there in the horse statue's eye. But you just had to go back five levels to find it, unless you knew how to get it already. Why don't you just look up an online guide or something? It's about learning the... Why am I explaining this to you? It's a good game. It's definitely invented for people who are hardcore gamers, not just the kids who want to come in and play Pac-Man. Death, why don't you just put the game down for a bit and hang out? If I have to. I got you some of that cider you like. Rotten apples? Dude, you're like boozy Santa Claus tonight. Yeah, well, it's tough with the whole... I know. When you told me last week, I... You knew about this last week? Well, I wasn't 100% sure of the details. And you didn't say anything to us? I didn't want to... You know, incite panic or anything. And you told death first? I mentioned it in passing, yeah. That's fucked up. Sorry, Frankie, but sometimes other people are close friends with people who aren't you. You guys are friends? Yeah. We've known each other for, what, five, six years? Really? Yeah. Oh. We used to volunteer together at this thing, this, like, cancer place. Then we became friends and started playing D&D and stuff. You guys play D&D? Well, I don't anymore. He was part of our campaign, but he left me stuck with Rob, Melissa, Jake, and fucking Karen. Is she really still going? Yes. And Rob keeps trying to kill her character off so she will stop wanting to come, but every time Lady fucking Tilkin starts bleeding out, she starts to cry, and then Rob feels bad, so he fudges his roles, and it's just this big fucking show. Isn't she, like, in her 30s now? Yes. She's still crying about a game? Yes! She just starts blubbering on about how hard she's worked to get this character to level whatever and how she has all these spells that she's going to lose if she has to start a new character. Spells, which I should add, are healing spells that she never fucking uses, which makes her a fucking useless healer! And she starts actually weeping over it. And you know her hair isn't even really red, right? It's like this normal person brown, but she has to dye it so she feels special. Calm down, bro. Why do you hate her so much? Because she's annoying and awful. And what do you know about anything? Also has to do with the fact that when they first met, they got really drunk and... William! They... Busting out the William! Sorry. We will never talk about the darkness again. It was a rough time for her. We call it the darkness now. The band? No. That's just... Just shut up. Wait, no! Christopher heads over to the computer and starts clicking around. What the hell is up with this kid? Wait! I guess we should wait. I don't wait for men. I leave them in my dust. You create dust? You know what I mean. From the computer, the opening chords of I Believe in the Thing Called Love begin to play. Yeah! Christopher blasts the speakers and starts playing air guitar. What the fuck? Come on! Eli joins in, rocking out on air guitar. Billy jumps in, singing along. Soon, Billy and Eli are trying to get Death and Frankie into the song. Their resistance quickly drops. Everyone is singing and dancing and playing fake instruments. People are rocking out, jumping off the air hockey table, hitting imaginary power chords. It's all super rocking. Blackout. Scene 5. The party. It's late at night. The overhead lights are dim, possibly out completely. Most of the illumination comes from the flickering of the video games, which cast the digital blue ambiance over everything. Everything is winding down, or as much as a five-person party can wind down. People are cleaning up pizza boxes and plates and so then beer cans. You guys aren't drunk, yeah? Nope. Because I, I don't want you driving home if you are. I bite here. I am probably too buzzed to bike home safely. I can say that confidently and maintain my masculinity. Shit! You sh- 
shouldn't have, you shouldn't even have had anything. Damn it. Uh, I can drive you home after I drop off death. Where, where do you live? On Slater Street? That's like on the other side of town for me. It's fine, it's fine. Don't you have to open tomorrow? That's in like five hours or something. By the time you get to bed, you'll never be able to wake up in time. It's fine, I'll work it out. You can walk, right? It's totally walkable. I mean, like, I could if I wanted to die on the way because it's forever away. It's like two or three miles tops. He can't just walk home. What what if something happens to him? I can't have his parents just suing me for letting him get like this and then just walk home. It's fine. Christopher, I'll give you a ride. I just won't sleep much tonight. Guys, chill. I'll just drive him home. I'm going that direction anyways. You sure? Yeah. And you're sober? Yeah. Okay, then do the, the police thing. What? The police thing, like the the line thing. Oh. She walks in a straight line, foot after foot. No, you also gotta put your your finger on your nose. She does, and then walks the line again. See? Sober as a dead man. What if the dead man died of alcohol poisoning? Shut up. Fine. Take him home. And if you lose him on the way, that's cool, too. Death. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna step out and smoke. Me too. I'm probably gonna vacuum. I'll finish throwing this stuff out. Do you need any help? I'm not that drunk, bro. I got this. He flashes Eli a nice smile. Maybe gives him a look. Oh, well, yeah, I didn't mean that. Like, I know you're in control of your facilities or whatever. Faculties. What? Faculties. It's... the word you meant was faculties. Oh. Frankie turns on the vacuum. I'll explain it outside. Beth, Billy, and Eli go outside and hang out in front of the door. Eli takes his bag with him. For a while, there is a soft silence filled with just the vacuum and people existing. The kind of silence you only find at 3 a.m. As Frankie vacuums, Christopher collects the trash. He takes it out back. A few minutes later, he returns. Three outside chat. Eli, dude, can I ask you a question? What's your deal with this Christopher dude? What do you mean? Are you like... Do you have feelings for him, or... No. Well, I mean, that would be stupid, right? He's not... Well, I mean, I like him a lot. I just... Do you guys believe in love at first sight? No. Ah, well, I mean, I know it sounds stupid, but I feel like we... We have this thing. You know that feeling you get just at the bottom of your chest? When you see someone and it just kind of feels like someone plucked a string in your body? It's almost like a physical pain, but a good one. A permissible sadness. That's what I get when he's around. And I think that's love, that feeling. I know it sounds stupid because we just met, but the second I saw him, it was... It was meant to be. And... And I know you're probably going to try to talk me out of this or whatever, but the way he treats me, he must feel something or else what is he doing? People just don't act like that unless... I'm sorry. This is stupid. No. It's not. I just... There's a lot going on inside of everyone, and the feelings we get aren't... The ones that happen right away that are just so strong out of the gate, they're usually not love. I mean, I know, but it's not just like I want to fuck him or whatever, but... I can see myself, like, moving in with him and starting a life and having a house and stuff. I know, bud. I just... I don't want you to get hurt. I know what it's like to be a queer kid growing up in a small town. There are a lot of pretty faces with pretty smiles. But let me tell you, as fluid as sexuality is, it's also pretty much set in stone. I've given my heart to so many girls who didn't want it, and in the end, I got hurt. You can't make someone love you. You can be close with them and say all the right things and take care of them, but you can't make someone love you. I've had a lot of these girls that just don't get it, and they... When the darkness happened, I was a wreck. I just threw away my heart to a girl because she was willing to be nice to me, 
and I don't want that for you. What Death is trying to say is that we're worried about you. I don't need anyone to worry about me. I know. But that doesn't stop us. I just... It will be fine, okay? Everything will be fine. I'm gonna... I'm gonna head home, okay? Eli. Yeah? You know, you can always come to me, yeah? Of course. I mean, there's a friend. That is, I don't just think of you as an employee. You're a friend. You're family. Thanks. You too. Thanks. I'm... I'm gonna head out. I'll see y'all later. Have a good night. Night. And, um, I know you're gonna disagree with me, but... I think this, all this, I think it's real. Eli heads out. Poor kid. Yeah. I hope this all works out for him. Me too. And thanks for taking the lead on that convo. You know, I suck at talking to people about their feelings. No worries, bro. How's your mom? Fine. Dad's birthday hit her really hard. I'm sorry. It's fine. Just so fucking frustrating because she'll get into these moods. Everything to her is just pointless and she just bitches and moans and I have to spend all my free time just coaxing her from bed. I know. Like, I get that it's hard, but everything is hard. I can't just always be this fucking positive force in everything, keeping everything so fucking cheery forever. Sir, I can't just magically take you out of your real chair and go mountain climbing with you. You need to chill the fuck out and accept the, the, the reality of the situation. Hey, hey. Shh. It's all right, bud. I think I... I hate her. Is that okay? I don't know. Well, I mean, I hate my parents. Yeah, but they kicked you out. We all agreed that I should move out. But if you wanted to stay, they would have... I know, I just... I know that you get pissed at your mom, but she loves you. Even on her worst day, she loves you so much. And I would kill for that. Sometimes I just wish she was... dead. Not like a... not like a passing thought, like a conscious, continuous idea. My life would be that so much easier without her. I think the people we love, they... We hate them because we let them in. We give them everything, our vulnerability, our fears, our sadness, and we hate them for it. We know that at any time they could completely and absolutely destroy us, and we're scared of that. Of them. I... I'm just really... Scared about everything about her. I know. Shh. I know. She rubs his back. He tries not to cry. <sighs> Shit. Ah, uh, sorry. I just. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Hey, no worries. What are friends for, right? Yeah. Let's get out of here. You've got to get to sleep. Yeah. I'll go in and grab our stuff, okay? Sure. Would you ask Frankie to lock up on her way out? Sure. I'll be back in a second. Okay? Okay. Death heads inside. Billy smokes quietly. Hey, thanks for cleaning up. It's fine. It's like literally the definition of my life, so no big. Billy and I are heading out. Uh, would you mind locking up? Sure. And thanks for driving Christopher home. Whatever. I've spent my whole life catering to the patriarchy, so why stop now? That's my girl. Night, dude. Night. Death leaves. She and Billy head out. Dude, look what I found. What? Oh, yeah, this used to be like a roller rink or something. I wonder if... What are you even doing? They probably took it out, but... Bingo! What? The hook for the, uh, the hang up the disco ball. Are you kidding? No. Here, hold this. He hands her the ball and disappears into the back room. She looks at it, to the door, and back at the ball. What the fuck? Christopher reemerges with a ladder. This is gonna be awesome. You're hanging this up? Duh, it's the coolest fucking thing. What? No. Come on, don't tell me you don't like it. You're super into all that ironic shit, right? It's like that. What, like can't be postmodern irony? What? You know, like... No, of course you don't. Just shit, be careful with that. He's trying to get on top of the ladder. I got it. Oh, Jesus. 
no, you... Mm, here, stop. Let me do it. She takes the ball from him and climbs the ladder. Eyes are stupid anyway. Frankie hooks up the disco ball onto the ceiling and gives it a spin. Lights go everywhere. There. Dude, wait. He rushes past the ladder, almost knocking Frankie off. What the fuck, dude? Christopher heads over to the counter as Frankie gets off the ladder. He opens up his laptop. Frankie snaps a photo from on top of the ladder. Here, put that ladder away. Frankie begrudgingly puts the ladder against the wall. Christopher plugs in his speakers to his computer and starts playing music. Probably some shitty EDM or something. What even is this music? It's like literal noise. Come on, dance with me. This is stupid. Come on, have some fun. We should get going. We can't leave until you dance with me. The gods of dance require the ritual. He dances. It's a little crazy, but also a little dorky and endearing. We... I... Do not defy the dance gods. (laughs) He turns the music up louder. He comes up to Frankie and starts dancing at her. She resists for a moment, but then smiles. The two dance. It's fun, silly, dumb. They dance like tornadoes move. Their bodies touch occasionally. They pull away quickly the first time, but eventually, they just deal with it. At the same time, they both go in for the kiss. Frankie pushes Christopher against the wall, and they go at it for a second. He puts his hand on top of her head and pushes her to her knees. She unzips his pants and sucks his cock. He keeps trying to push her head down further. She coughs a few times, gets irritated. She stands up, takes him by the hand to a racing game. She sits him down on the seat, gets on top of him, and like this, they fuck. The music is blaring. Their sex is awkward and unpleasant. Maybe he pulls at her hair or goes too fast and hard. He definitely thinks he's a porn star. The song ends, and it's quiet except for Frankie and Christopher. Soon, he climaxes. She does not. An awkward moment with her on top of him. She scrambles off of him, tries to fix her appearance. He stays there. The silence lingers longer than is comfortable. That was awesome. We should probably get out of here. Do you want to crash at my place tonight? No. I can't. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Frankie quickly shuts everything down as Christopher lazily gets his clothes back in order and gathers his things. Frankie shuts the lights off, locks the door, and they leave. Lights. Scene 6. Morning. A few days later. It's raining outside. Billy is cleaning something that's already clean. It's quiet. Frankie enters with an umbrella. She's uncharacteristically quiet and dull. Billy looks up. Hey. Hi. How are you? Fine. Better. Were you sick? I mean, yeah. Not like hungover? What? No. Because, I mean, it's fine. Just... I wanted to know. I wasn't, okay? I drove home that night, and it was just like any other night. Okay. It's just... Like, if you call out for more than one shift in a row, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have a doctor's note. Frankie gestures. What do you want from me? I mean, if you don't have one, it's not... Like, I'm the end of the line. Nobody's gonna check it but me. You doing okay? I'm fine. Really? You can tell me, kid. Kid? Eli said he hadn't heard from you in a few days. Yeah, well, I had this migraine, and it sucked, okay? Come on, Frankie. I just had this shitty migraine. I laid in bed all day. I was sensitive to the light, so I wasn't on my phone, okay? I'm sorry I called out a few times. Frankie, listen. You've been working here for a while. I know when something's up. Jesus, it's nothing. You don't have to... You know, I let you get away with a lot of shit here, and... Well, it's not my fault that you're in love with me or something. Don't do this. You've been obsessed with me since you hired me when I was 16. So Stop. Don't... You're better than this. I'm going to go in the back and do admin. Christopher will be here soon. Just get your shit together, okay? He heads in back. Frankie looks out the window. After a while, she goes to the front counter computer, puts on some quiet music, adjusts the volume. She walks over to the coffee machine, grabs herself a styrofoam cup, and pours some. She sips some, black, and makes a face. She decides this is what she deserves. Bitter, burnt coffee. She walks back over to the front counter and sits, laying her head down on the countertop, hood up. She listens to the music and stares vacantly into the window. She decides to take a photo of her misery. Time passes. 
Frankie digs through her bag and pulls out makeup. She languidly applies it. Foundation, dark mauve lipstick, dark cat eye eyeliner. She somehow manages to paint a smile on her face. As she's putting on the finishing touches, Christopher walks in. He's soaked. Frankie is mostly back to her usual self. You're wet. It's raining. I had to walk all the way here from Blubby's. That was stupid. I didn't have much of a choice, but luckily I came prepared. He pulls out the change of clothes from his bag. Do you mind if I... Frankie gives a non-committal shrug. How are you feeling? Fine. It was like... This head thing. That sucks. My older brother has that since he came back from Iraq. What? I have migraines, not PTSD. Oh. Well, I tried to text you, but you didn't respond. Try harder next time. Okay, I will. Christopher is trying to take off his shirt, but it's soaked through, so it's very difficult. He struggles to take it off. He's showing a lot of skin. He finally gets it off, balls it up, and throws it into his bag. Oh, hey, by the way, what's your last name? What? Your last name. My mom called me a slut because I didn't know your last name. Excuse me? Like, when I told her about the party. And so, what's your last name? I just... I'm sorry, I... De Palma. My last name is De Palma. Cool. He takes off his pants. He's standing there in just his boxers. Frankie just wants to die. You know that this is like a business, right? Nobody ever comes here. Plus, it's not like you're upset you have to see this again. He quickly pulls down the elastic of his waistband to show off his pubes and wiggles his eyebrows suggestively. Yo, boy wonder. Put it away. This is your job. Fine. He puts his dry clothes on. I think my migraine is coming back. So we... So do we have to tell Billy about us? What? No. No. Why? No. I mean... Isn't that what you're supposed to do when you're dating a co-worker? I'm sorry? Oh, have you never heard of that before? Sometimes people get nervous when their co-workers are dating. My mom got in trouble when she started dating this guy from work. Well, he was her boss, so... Anyway, do you think they'll make one of us quit? I mean, if they do, I will do it. I'm fine doing that for you, and besides, you've been here longer, so it makes sense. Billy comes out of the office. Ah, oh, hey, dude. How are you? I'm doing good. Got caught in the rain for a bit, but drying off. I'm sorry, Billy, can I talk to you for a second? Uh, yes. Frankie looks at Christopher. What? Alone? Uh, okay, can't I just... Stop oppressing me with your patriarchy and blah, 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 get the hell out. She practically drags Christopher into the office and slams the door behind him. Frankie, what the hell? You can't just... I need your help. Help? From the patriarchy? Yes, I'm disgusted too. I just... I did a bad thing, and now I'm pretty sure that everything's awful. Yes, it is. Thank you for validating my life choices. What did you do? Um, I maybe kind of... After you left, had sex with Christopher. Excuse me? I had sex with Christopher, okay? And I don't know what to do. He thinks we're dating now, and I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Please... Help, I don't know what to do. Can we just go back to a second to the part where you fucked a 15-year-old? No. He... No. No, no. She sits in fetal position on the floor. I'm taking you thought he was older? She nods. Yeah, well, he's 15. Oh, God. Yes, that's the most... Like, am I gonna get arrested? Are you going to get arrested? That's, like, statutory. And if his mom presses charges... His mom will be fine with it. How do you know? She drives a Subaru Outback. She's, like, the literal most hippie person ever. What if she decides to anyway? What if I'm liable because... It's fucking fine, Billy. What do I do? I'm guessing you haven't told Eli? No. He's never going to know. Maybe you should tell him? No. Never. And then you need to talk to Christopher. Hey, can I go home? No. I should probably just quit and never come back, yeah? No. Do you think I could get a bus from here to Seattle? No. Shit. Shit. Fuck. Shit. She starts sobbing. Oh, God. Uh... God damn it. He goes to the office and opens the door. Christopher comes out. What's going on? Go home. Day off. Sweet. He sees Frankie on the floor. She's fine. Go home. He looks upset. 
No, she's just very, very happy. Let's go. Can I talk to her? No. Why not? Go home. Just want to Christopher, trust me on this one, okay? Go home. A furry silence. Christopher slowly grabs his stuff. He watches Frankie the entire time. It feels like he's taking forever. Frankie is trying to make herself as small as possible. Maybe if she tries hard enough, she'll eventually just disappear. Eventually, Christopher leaves. Billy takes out the cell phone. Hey, are you around? I got this, uh, issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, otherwise I wouldn't ask you. I'll give you free games if you want. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Uh, death is coming over. She's better at this than I am. He walks over to the front door and flips the open sign to close. Frankie is on the floor. She'll uh, be here soon. You can just... Billy heads into the office. Death comes in. Frankie doesn't look up. Probably talks to the floor. How did you get here so fast? I live down the street. Billy comes out from in back. Oh, good, you're here. What's going on? Frankie, after the party the other night, her and Christopher... Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. (laughs) Frankie covers her mouth with her arm and screams into it. Does anyone know? Just you and me. And Christopher, I guess. Shit! What should... I've got this. You want to head back into the... Yeah. Yeah. Death kneels down next to Frankie. She pats her on the head, which turns into her softly playing with her hair. They sit like this for a short while. How you doing, kid? I want to die. Is that anything new? No. Okay. So that's... good. I'm going to spare you the lecture. Thank you. Because I'm sure you realize that what you've done is shitty. Yes. Super shitty. Betrayal level shitty. I know. Okay, okay. So, you need to tell him. Why? Because communication is the crux of any friendship. If I don't tell him, he'll never know, and it will be fine. Do you really expect for Christopher to keep his stupid fucking mouth shut? (sighs) Exactly. So you need to talk to him about this. But it's not my fault. It's just something... I I don't know. We were there, and suddenly we were kissing, and then I spent my night cleaning out my vag and driving to Kent to buy Plan B from the only 24-hour CBS. Well, you need to tell him. I know you don't want to, but sometimes difficult things are like taking off a band-aid. If you tear it off, it's going to suck, but it's a lot harder if you try to pull it off slowly. That is the most cliché metaphor. Fine. It's like getting your wisdom teeth taken out. If you leave them in for too long, when you do have to take them out, there's a lot of bigger problems that can occur. It's best to just take them out instead of hoping they never hurt. That one was worse. What do you want me to say? I want you to say that everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Even though everything is terrible? Even though everything is terrible. How do I tell him? Softly. With lots of apology. I'm afraid. That's okay. It's the stuff that we do when we're scared that defines us. Everything else is just a filler. Okay. Okay. Can we just stay like this for a little? Sure. They sit there, Frankie and Death, two women floating in the middle of the sea. The lights fade. Scene 7. Eli is in the arcade doing nothing, maybe reading. The door opens. He looks up. It's Frankie. A soft silence between the two. Hey. Hey. Is it just you here, or...? Billy is out at the bank and Christopher is on break. How are you? You know. Yeah? Yeah. Are you sick? No, I... Because if you were, you could have... No, not like like the flu or... And you just kind of disappeared. I just couldn't do... Without telling me or anything. I know, I'm... And you kind of do that a lot sometimes. No, I don't. I mean, I get it. You're, like, sad and shit. It's not sad. Just sad, like, that's a nothing emotion. Whatever. I mean, if you need space, yeah, all you need to do... Simple. You don't need to explain. Just yeah, say... Yeah, but you don't... It's just hard on me. When I don't text you back? 
to remember that you're not good at being a friend. Fuck you. It's fine, it's just... You're shitty at it. Being a friend. I'm a great fucking friend. No, you're not. I am always there for you. No. When that guy from summer camp broke your heart even though he was a piece of shit and you barely even gave him a hand job, or when you got rejected from NYU, or when your fucking dog died and you were a fucking high schooler and you still cried like a fucking baby for weeks, I was there for you. Barely. When my dog died, my dog I had since I was a fucking child, you blew me off multiple fucking times to go hook up with Craig Patinsky and his dad's Escalade. And when I was rejected from NYU, you said, and I quote, Well, it's probably better, because it's not like you can pay anyway. I'm a good friend. Only when you want to be. When something else comes along, you dive into it and only come back when you're bored. I'm not some game on your phone you can play when you're in a waiting room. I'm not Candy Crush. Well, did you ever think that it's kind of hard to put up with your bullshit sometimes? How many times can I fucking show up at your door with chocolate and a copy of Eternal Sunshine and tell you that your weekly object of affection doesn't deserve you? You have shitty taste in men. I have shitty taste in friends. Jesus Christ, it's like, what the fuck is even your defining feature? You're just in love with straight boys all the time. That doesn't make you a fucking defined person. And what is your defining feature? Well, I'd like to think sense of style, but at the very least, people like me. Like you? People feel sorry for you. You flirt with them and they like you, but then they get to know who you are on the inside under your stupid fucking eyeliner. It's not stupid. And they fucking feel sorry for you. With all of your stupid fucking body issues saying how you're so fat when you weigh practically nothing, covering up your shitty self-esteem by pretending to joke about it. You think you're so mysterious and cool, but you're transparent and shallow. Shallow? You fall in love with guys because they smile at you. You're pathetic. Well... The door opens. They both snap their heads to see who is coming in. It's Christopher, carrying some McDonald's. Hey guys, how's it going, Frankie? Oh, did you tell him yet? What? You didn't? Come on, I've been dying all day working with him and not being able to say. Say what? Not now, Christopher. No. What? About Frankie and I. Christopher! What about you and Frankie? About how we're dating. What? Yeah. Well, the night of the party, Stop. we were hanging out after everyone left, and then she kissed me, and then we had sex, and I think we took each other's virginity. Oh? Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So now we're dating. She's really good at giving head. Christopher, shut the fuck up. Dude, what the hell? I'm not dating you, you piece of shit. We fucked once. That's it. I wouldn't date you ever, even if everyone else in the fucking world suddenly disappeared. Don't talk to him like that. Yeah. yeah. Shut up. What? I'm so fucking pissed at you, too. Why? You fucked my best friend. Yeah? You flirt with me all the time. So? So I have feelings for you. I know. Then why would you treat me like that? Because you like it. I don't get it. Why are you mad at me for? You knew I had feelings for you. Yeah, it's really obvious. He's right. You're pathetic. Shut the fuck up. I don't get why I'm in trouble. Because most people have empathy, you fucking douchebag. I don't get it. You feel good when I treat you like that. Why is that wrong? You fucked my best friend. Oh, well, she's hot. You're a fucking pig. You're the one who started it. I did not. Yes, you fucking did. You pushed me against that wall and you got on your knees and you sucked my cock like a porn star. I don't see how this is my fault. I hate you. Shit, are you okay? I feel like I'm going to vomit. You're not going to vomit. She might still be sick. She wasn't sick. Oh, I'm going to. Oh, God. You're doing this to yourself. You're getting yourself worked up and now you're fucking acting out for the attention. I, I can feel it in my stomach. Maybe that's your conscience. Life isn't an indie movie, you fucking cunt. You don't get to just do shit to people and have it not affect them. You're a terrible fucking person. Billy walks in. Frankie is having a panic attack on the floor. What the fuck, guys? Did you know about this? What? Her and Christopher. I... I mean... Are you fucking kidding? Only for like a day. I quit. What? I quit. I don't want to work here with any of you. You are all shitty fucking people. Eli leaves and slams the door behind himself. Billy is furious. He walks over to the wall and punches it repeatedly. The drywall cracks and his fist starts to bleed. Fuck, 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 fuck! Are you two fucking kidding me? I was gone for 25 fucking minutes and you fucking destroy this kid? 
Dude, your hand is bleeding. I tried to fucking help you, and instead you ruined this kid's life. You're fucking pathetic children. Billy, you're scaring me. You two are both fired. Get the fuck out of my store. But... Out! They scurry out. Billy shouts to no one. Fuck! He punches the wall one more time. He probably breaks his hand. Lights. See Nate. A week or two later. Somewhere near night. Billy is cleaning up for the night. Frankie comes in, maybe a little sheepish. Billy looks up at her. Welcome back. Thanks. You doing closing stuff? Yeah. Isn't it a little early? Uh, I've been closing early a lot lately. Because I don't really have the staff. Because nothing really matters anyway. Is it just you? No. Eli came back. Called him, we talked, and he came back. He's here right now, actually. Oh. I'm sorry I fired you. Whatever. I probably deserved it. Yeah, but, you know, not for that one thing. Just in general. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they pushed forward our closing. To when? This weekend. Oh, shit. Yeah. Is it because of... I mean, yeah. (laughs) Called up Christopher's mom and told her what happened. She said she didn't really mind. and That she wasn't going to press charges. But when I told Maddie, she said it would be a smart idea to just close the place down early. We've barely been breaking even anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah, but... Now that the details are worked out, I find out that I'm getting a pretty decent severance check. That's nice. Yeah. Well... Probably use it to fix up my car, maybe pay off some of my mom's mortgage. Take a little time to figure it all out. How have you been? You know, just getting by. I, uh, actually, I, I got into art school. What? The one where I was on the waiting list, yeah. Are you gonna go? Yeah. Shit, man. Yeah, it's going to be expensive, but that's life. I guess so. (laughs) Have you talked to Eli? No. I tried, but he ignored my calls, so... You gonna tell him? No. So you're just gonna leave? That's the plan. That's shitty. Well, if the shoe fits. How's your mom? Yeah, she's okay. Doing her thing. It's nice. Eli comes out from the back room. He looks at Frankie. She looks back at him. Hey, I look who's here. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Frankie was just telling me that she got into art school. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How are you going to pay? I'll find a way. Uh, I'm going to go in the back. You two need to talk. He goes. They stand in silence for a bit. You never returned my phone calls. You tried like twice. Still. I wasn't very happy with you. I'm still not. I'm sorry that you got hurt. If it makes you feel any better, Christopher keeps trying to talk to me. It doesn't. I'm pretty sure that you're still hanging out with him anyway. How did you know? I've been friends with you forever. I know how you operate. Are we ever going to be friends again? Probably not. Why not? Because you... Because the person that you want to be, this person that you're trying so hard to become, that person is shitty. I made a mistake. No, you didn't. You knew exactly what you were doing. You had all of the knowledge to read the situation and the outcomes and make an informed decision, and you still picked this. I mean, yeah, I fucked up, but... It's not even about that. If you ran into you on the street, you'd hate them. This whole thing, this whole persona, the low-rent Lana Del Rey thing is tiring. I'm just so exhausted from trying to keep up with you. You just think it's so cute how you hate everything, and you think that your sadness is beautiful. But guess what? People's sadness is ugly. 
It's gross and disgusting and leads them to do things like you did. Are you mad at me? No. I should be. But I'm not. I'm just tired. Why were you friends with me if you hate this so much? For one, because you're actually charismatic. Even though you like to pretend that you're not. And two, because the person inside, down under all the stupid eyeliner and bad clothes, is a really cool person. This is who I am, though. I guess so. I guess so. You're not the best person either, though. I know. You just constantly need to be around people. And you can only define yourself in relation to the guys you like. You put yourself in these situations with these guys where you know that you're going to get hurt, but you do it anyway. I know. And that's why I'm not mad about Christopher. Something like this would have happened anyway. It's not the sex at all. It's the fact that I know that you played into it, and the fact that you're still playing into it. It just reminds me of what kind of person you are. And this whole thing? It's so selfish. You trying to make me into this person that you want me to be. You know who I am. You've known it for years, and now suddenly it's not good enough? You're just angry at who I've become? Yeah, I guess. You don't get to decide who I am, and you especially don't get to say who I am on the inside. That's some supremely fucked up controlling shit. I'm sorry you feel that way. I guess sometimes just liking someone isn't a good enough reason to stay friends with them. So is that it? We're just... done? Yeah. When do you leave for school? There's this pre-orientation thing that I have to go to. When? I leave tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. It's all been kind of... just short. Yeah, short. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. There's a... We're doing this thing, me and Billy and Death, tomorrow morning-ish. What kind of thing? I don't know. It's... Tomorrow is the last day that we're open... So it's just going to be a, a morning thing. Oh, that sounds cool. Do you think you can be there? Yeah, definitely. It's just that I think that Billy would really like to have you there. And I think it would be a fitting end for this place with all of us. Yeah, no, I agree. So you'll be there? I already said yes. Okay. Okay. Death enters. Oh, Frankie. Hey. I'm surprised to see you're here. Yeah, I came back. You just seem like... I didn't think you'd uh, deal with it all. Well, here I am. Have you talked to Eli? Yeah, kinda. Yeah or no? There is no kinda. Yeah, I did. Eli? She did. Do you guys feel better? Does anyone ever feel positively to begin with? We're not friends anymore. Frankie and I. Eli, like, broke it off or whatever. Oh. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. I'm leaving. I need to go pick up Jennifer from the grocery store because her car is in the shop. Jennifer? Her mom. She calls her mom by her first name? Yes. It's just a thing, okay? She's such a Jennifer anyway. So, bye, I guess. She leaves. I'm proud of you. For sticking up for yourself. Thanks. How do you feel about it? Like, you know when you're going through the attic or whatever and you find an old toy or blanket or something that you used to love and you just kind of look at it for a second and then put it back in the box? Yeah. 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 Lights. Scene 9. The next morning. The sun is rising. Maybe it's a little gray outside. All is quiet in the arcade. After a bit, 
Billy walks up to the front door. He unlocks it, brews a pot of coffee, and starts on his morning routine. He moves with the knowledge that this will be the last time he does everything. He sighs, drinks the coffee. He stands there for a few moments and then walks into the back room. He emerges a moment later with an industrial-sized can of coffee. He forces it into his bag. Death arrives. She stops outside the door and lights a cigarette. She and Billy see each other and wave. Soon Eli enters. He and Death nod at each other. He goes inside. He and Billy meet eyes and look at each other for a moment. Silent, knowingly. This is it? This is it. How do you feel? Like everything changes whether you want it to or not. How do you feel? Like nothing ever changes enough. Death comes in. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. So, this is the end. Yeah. So what do we do? Uh, I don't know. I was hoping that it would just come to me. Oh. Well, I know what I want to do. Dungeon quest? It's my last chance to play this game, maybe even ever. Short of buying one on eBay, I don't know where I would ever find another one. Plus, this one is mine. I know exactly how the joystick moves and where it sticks, and I know just how to push the buttons. It's perfect. She puts in two quarters and the game starts up. She begins to play. We just gonna hang out all day then? I guess. I don't really mind. I think sometimes we give events this huge significance in our minds, and then we, when we get there, they're just like any other day. And besides, this is how I'd like to go out, with a nice, happy day of hanging out. No shitty boys or evil girls. Actually, I invited Frankie. And she said she's coming. Oh. You sure? Yeah. Well, I want to think yes, so I'm going to think yes. You said she was leaving today. Yeah, for Rhode Island. It's going to be good for her. I guess. You decided that you're going to move on? Yeah. It's just hard because the person that she wants to be is the kind of person she and I used to shit on all the time together. People change. Yeah. What are you going to do, Billy? Do you have another job? Actually, I don't. I was... I was thinking of moving. To where? Bristol. Why? I think it would be good for me. I think I need to get out of here and just start new. I grew up here. I'm going to die here. I also don't know what else I need to do or want to do or even can do. It's good because it's far enough away from here that I'm actually moving, but close enough that I can come back and help my mom if I need to. How far is it? Oh, it's only like an hour drive on I-90. I'm going to miss you. What? When do you go? I'm going to miss you. I'm not disappearing forever, dude. I'm just moving. We can still hang out. Yeah? Yeah. What about you, Death? What about me? What are you doing after this? Well, you know, just hanging out and trying to be happy in a world specifically constructed to make me miserable all the time in order to profit off of my sadness. So nothing different? Nothing different. So everything is the same except that Frankie is gone. She wasn't really there for you to begin with. So nothing has changed. Probably. Ugh. You know, it's a lot like Dungeon Quest. What? Oh man, here we go. Here what goes? Oh, she does this all the time. Relates everything back to Dungeon Quest. I do not. Yes, you do. Anytime you want to make a point or say something meaningful, you try to relate it back to DQ. Okay, let me guess. Uh, life is like Dungeon Quest because you have to play through it to get better, but you're still going to keep dying and making mistakes. I was going to end with, and in the end, you're still going to die anyway. But yeah, that was pretty much the gist of it. That's corny. Yep. But that don't stop it from being true. <laughs> they sit in silence for a minute and watch her play the game. Do you think you'll ever beat this game? Me? Probably not. Someone? Maybe. How far have you gotten? To the end of the 99th floor. Once. A few years ago. There's this huge boss you have to beat and it's fucking impossible. Hey, what's with that door? What door? That little door. In the bottom of the horse statue. Where? Right there. That's part of the... Of, like, the molding or design of the statue. It's not a door. No, it has a knob, see? Use your shrinking spell. Holy shit. Music plays from the machine. Holy shit. No way. This is... 
I've never seen this or heard about this before. It's a... Fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. A voice plays from the console. Hello there, adventurer. Welcome to my secret area. This is a secret area? That's what he said. Thank you for playing this game with such loving attention to detail. You're welcome. Since you've made it, I have a short speech prepared. Oh, shit. This is the real ending. There's no way to beat the boss. No, this isn't the end. There's still many difficult bosses ahead. In fact, this isn't even related to your quest here. It's something else. A few kind words. Barf. It's hard, I know, to get here. You've climbed through snake pits and swam through oceans. You've defeated enemies and relied on your allies. You've chugged potions and learned magic spells. But where you are now is not even close to halfway done. So, I want to let you know that it's okay to give up. What? Not right now, if you don't want. If you've found this room, which is just a small number of lines of code swimming in a sea of programming, you've clearly put much of your time into Dungeon Quest. Thank you for that. But, also know that sometimes, it isn't the end point that matters. Knowing when to give up on something is the best part of life. Maybe only 10 or 15 people will complete this game. Ever. So, giving up is okay. What? That's it? Some speech? And a fucking corny speech at that! Does seem kind of on the nose. Like, is that supposed to be the moral of the game? I don't know, it was kind of nice. It was corny and it was stupid. I didn't even get any cool weapons or anything, just a okay, lecture. Okay, okay, I get it if you're upset. Take some extra potions. Thanks again for playing. Sweet. Now go play outside. What the fuck is this game? It's Japanese. Oh. You gonna give up? Eventually, but not today. Do you know when Frankie's supposed to get here? I don't think she's coming. She's not very good at being reliable. But it's fine. Everyone goes back to watching Beth play the game. A moment later, Frankie shows up at the front door. She looks in and sees them all huddled up playing the game. Maybe they all laugh together. She watches them for a moment. She raises up her camera and snaps a photo. She watches for a moment or two more, turns and leaves. Curtain. And that was It's Just Something That Happened by Alex Kump. If you enjoyed this episode of the Modern Myths Podcast, be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast player. While you're there, leave us a comment, rate us, review us, every little bit helps. Also, if you want more Modern Myths Podcast, be sure to stop over at our Patreon page at patreon.com slash 12 Theater. You can get early access to episodes, behind-the-scenes podcast footage, live Mythburg events, behind the scenes at our main stage. We will make it interesting for you. Small monthly donation will help keep our podcast going, and you will get more behind-the-scenes access and early access to the Modern Myths podcast. The Modern Myths podcast is produced by 12 Pierce Theater, executive producer Vince Ventura, producers Sarah Fisher, Matt Henderson, and Marcus Savage. This episode of the Modern Myths podcast was edited by Michael Shaheen. It's Just Something That Happened was written by Alex Kump and directed by Reginald Douglas, featuring Moira Quigley as Frankie, Matt Henderson as Eli, Ryan Patrick Kearney as Christopher, John Feitner as Billy, Alex Manalo as Death, Christopher Collier reading Stage Directions. The recording location was generously provided to us by Time Sys Corporation. And you can visit us at 12peers.org or patreon.com slash 12peers theater. As always, thank you for listening.